So my name is Massimo Nicoletti Altimari. I work for uh, Hub International as of today, actually, the CHS Alliance, and uh, I'm the Senior Quality and Accountability Officer. Uh, well, I started doing humanitarian work around uh, 17 or 18 years ago and uh, I did a lot of field work and all along my career and my work on the field, um, accountability, even if at the beginning we didn't know it was called as such, uh, was really central to the, to, the, to, to the way I was doing my work. I was very, uh, I was always trying to, to get close to the populations we were working with, the affected the communities and, uh, and try to, to build positive relations with them. Uh, in order to be able to, 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 to deliver, to design and deliver the assistance that was more appropriate uh, for them in that situation. Um, that led me to work uh, at program level with, uh, with NGOs and uh, for a number of years also with UNICEF. Also, uh, all, often on conflict situation in complex emergencies. So, um, while, while moving out of the UN, uh, I um, worked for a consortium of organizations that was working on, whose main, main objective was, the consortium was the ECB, the Emergency Capacity Building Program. Um, it was a consortium of seven uh, major international organizations, NGOs, and uh, the main objective was to improve the quality and the speed of humanitarian response. Accountability was one of the, of the pillars that we were working on and I felt a very strong attraction to the subject uh, that came back from my initial background in, in humanitarian work. And uh, after having done um, uh, two or three years after having coordinated the work of this consortium in East Africa, in the Horn of Africa, um, I moved into an organization or an initiative that was doing a specific work on accountability. It seemed to be the natural evolution of my, of my career. And, uh, and that's how I ended up working with HUB International in Geneva. The way humanitarian, uh, the humanitarian industry is structured is to be accountable to donors, to those who have the power, the money, those who give the money. Um, this is not a critics or a criticism to that level of accountability, but it's um, just uh, a reality <laughs> that we have to look at, um, looking at the structures of um, NGOs or UN agencies, uh, financial, uh, uh, finance and administrative and admin sections are Pretty consist are a pretty consistent part of, of the, 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 the structure of the, this organization. They, there is quite a lot of pressure put on program people to um, keep the level of accountability to donors to, to its best, as it rightly should be. Uh, the problem is, in my view, that uh, in a way, uh, this is having a, is is draining a lot of energies from uh, from the work of organizations. Even because donors are not uh, a, a unite entity, everyone has its own needs. Everyone has its own reporting lines. Everyone has its own reporting formats. Uh, so there is quite a lot of energy that goes into keeping that level of accountability of a good standard. We are still struggling to bring the level of accountability to affect the population to the same level of that that we have for the donors. And that's something that, uh, that uh, we're working on today. It's becoming the center of our work in this moment. How we can strengthen, we can streamline accountability to affect the population across the project cycle without in any way affecting the level of accountability that we have to have for the donors. I'm very critic, critic on uh, 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 in this in this because because we keep asking ourselves this question and we rarely 
ask this question to the affected population. Uh, we try to find solutions uh, to things without uh, properly engaging those that are the most affected by the actions, by the decisions that are taken by people like, like me, like you, like those that are, that sit in a, in a, in a, in a decision-making uh, um, situation. And uh, uh, so, in my view, I think uh, why it is important, it's because when people are in a moment of distress, when we talk about affected population, even this jargon is, is it's it's a cold one. You know, it keeps us separated from from uh, from the suffering, from the life that affected population live during moment of displacements, during the disasters, be it natural natural disaster or or a conflict situation. They need to be given confidence, they need to be given uh, the possibility to rebuild their life, to rebuild their dignities, to rebuild themselves as human beings. And this doesn't happen by distributing a, a ration of food or distributing a, a, a kitchen kit or whatever it is, or building a latrines or whatever it is. This happens by involving them in every single aspect of the response that we are organizing to save their lives or to help them cope with that situation. They have to feel an integral part of that response. That's how they regain their dignity. That's how they regain their, their, their place in the society. Um, I was invited by, by Norwegian Refugee Council to visit one of their project sites in the Beka Valley in, in Lebanon. And uh, uh, their project is called uh, Community Capacity Building. It was born out of the realization that uh, communities didn't know at all who was bringing assistance to them, what assistance they were entitled to. Uh, they didn't have any phone number or contact of service providers. They were just totally passively waiting for anything that would be brought to them uh, without having uh, the slightest possibility to influence also what type of assistance they could have, uh, they were needed actually. So what the NRC did was to to um, design this project that was aiming at informing the communities about all these things. Who are these organizations? Why they are there? What are the, the, the entitlements that affected population have? Uh, share contacts, uh, give them the possibility to ask questions, to, 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 to become an integral part of that. Uh, response uh, process that would help them feel part of something rather than being totally helpless, passively waiting for something to happen without even knowing what tomorrow will bring to them. So for me that was one of well, one very practical example of what an organization should do how you, you should look like, how should you look at the, prob at the problems that you face, on, that you have on the, on the field and, uh, and the actions that you have to take to uh, be sure that these problems will, uh, will be resolved. That's a very, very simple uh, and effective uh, action that the NRC team implemented. And I said simple not by chance. It's because, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> accountability is nothing complex, it's nothing complicated. Accountability is a very simple uh, um, concept, can we call it concept? Uh, it's based on the respect for human beings, it's based, it's based on the respect for the others, it's based on the realization that you have to give others what you would like to, to receive if you were in the same conditions, in the same situation. And I think it's that human element that accountability should be able to pull out again from the immaterial system.